Welcome back to the Solutions Manual. In this video, we will solve the problem F8-2 from RC Repeller Engineering Statics 12 edition. Our content is problem. We have to determine the minimum force P to prevent the 30 kg rod AB from sliding. The contact surface at P is smooth, whereas the coefficient of static friction between the rod and the wall at A is 0.2. So to solve this problem, let us write a statement first. Since we have to prevent the rod from sliding, So the rod is in equilibrium. So now let us draw all the forces on our diagram. So first of all, at point B, I have a normal force here acting upwards like this this is my normal force at B let's call this NB since point B, point B is a smooth at a smooth contact surface so here is no frictional force at point B now at point A, I have a normal force from the wall. This is the an A force. At point A, I have a frictional force, but it is important to guess the direction of the frictional force. So if the friction at point A is not sufficient to hold the rod at equilibrium, so the rod will fall downwards which means the frictional force should act upwards on the point A like this this is my frictional force let's call this FA I have one more force that is the weight of the rod the weight will be acting in the middle of the length of the rod like this let's call this W R O D so now we can apply the equations of the equilibrium so our first equation is sum of the forces in x direction equal to 0 I am considering right hand side as positive so we have P minus N A equals to 0. Let's call this equation 1. And we have another equation that is sum of the forces in y direction equals to 0. I am considering up direction as positive. So we have F A minus W R O D plus N B equals 0. Now, FA, the force FA could also be written as mu as NA. So, our this equation becomes NB plus, since the mu as at point A is 0 0.2, so 0 0.2 NA equals to the weight of the rod, the weight is 30 into 9.81. Our this equation becomes NB plus 0.2 NA equals to 2294.3. So let's call this equation 2. This is our equation 2, and that is our equation 1.
But as you can see from the equations, we have three unknowns, but two equations. So we need at least one more equation. Our third equation is sum of the moments above point A is equal to zero. I am considering counterclockwise direction as positive. If we look into the figure, the forces at A and an A would not produce any moment above point A because they are passing through it. The weight of the rod will produce the moment in counterclockwise direction, so it would be taken as positive. But what should be the moment arm? The moment arm for the weight of the rod above point A is this but if I extend it backwards then the weight of then the moment arm for the weight of the rod above point A is this perpendicular distance from the line of action of weight of the rod to the point A that is my favorite point. Let's call this distance x. And this right here is point A. I zoom in. This is my point A. And let's call this point O. This right here. But now I have to find the distance x. But how could I find that? To do that, first of all, let's find the length of the rod. So for if I write here length of rod consider the triangle A B and let's call this point C A B and C. I can apply the Pythagoras theorem here. So we have A B squared is equals to the BC square plus CA square. So AB is equals to the square root of the length BC square that is 4 plus the length CA that is 3, 3 square. From here, the length of the rod becomes 5 meters. Now, we have found the length of the rod. Now, for the distance for AO, by looking at the diagram, the weight of the rod would be acting half of the length of the rod. So AO is equals to half of the length AB. So the distance AO becomes 2.5 meters. So this right here, this distance, if I zoom in, this distance is 2.5 meters. And one more thing is that if I consider this angle right here as theta, then that angle is also theta because they are alternate to one another. So let us find the theta as well, the angle theta as well. So for 5 for to find the theta, for theta, we can consider the same triangle A, B, and C. So, tan theta is equal to the opposite, that is 3, divided by the adjacent, that is 4. So, 
So from here theta becomes 36.87 degrees. So now we can easily find the moment arm at the distance x for the rate of the rod. Now to find the distance x, we can consider, so for x, we can consider the triangle, if I go back to the figure, the triangle A, O and let's call this point as point B. So our triangle A, O, D looks something like this. is the point A, that is the point O and this right here is point B and this right here is the distance x, that is the distance AO and the distance AO is 2.5 meters and we know that this angle right here is theta from the diagram and theta is 36.87 degrees. So now we can apply the ratio of cos, so cos theta is equal to the adjacent that is x upon the hypotenuse that is 2.5. So x is equal to cos theta and theta is 36.87 degrees into 2.5. So from here x becomes 2 meters. So this is the moment arm of weight of the rod about point A. Okay. Now let's get back to our moment equation. Now we have found the moment arm that is 2 meters. That's 2 meters. And then we have the size unit. Then we have the force, the external force P, and it is trying to rotate the assembly in also the counterclockwise direction, so it would also be taken as positive, and the moment arm is this perpendicular distance that we already know, that is 3 meters, and the NB force is trying to rotate the assembly in clockwise direction about point A, so it would be taken as negative. So we have negative NB and the moment arm is this perpendicular distance that we already know, that is 4 meters. 4 is equal to 0. So we know the weight of the rod that is 294.3 newtons so it becomes so over this equation after simplifying it becomes 3p minus 4nb is equals to minus 588.3 6. So let's call this equation 3. Let's call this equation 3. So now we have 3 equations and 3 unknowns. Now we can easily simultaneously solve them. If I consider equations 2 and 3, so this is our equation 2, that is NB plus 0 0.2 and a is equals to 294.3 that is the equation 2 and equation 3 is this equation 3p minus 4 and b is equals to negative 588.6 but I already know from 
equation 1, this equation that P is equals to NA. So our equation 3 becomes P is equals to NA. Equation 3 becomes Three n a minus four n b is equals to negative five eighty eight point six. Let's call this equation four. So now we are going to solve equation two and equation four simultaneously. Five substitution. So consider. Equation 2 and equation 2 becomes if I make the NB as a subject, so it becomes 294.3 minus 0 0.2 and A. Let us call this equation A. Put equation A in equation. Four in this equation. So equation four becomes three and a minus four times two ninety four point three minus zero point two and a is equals to minus five eighty eight. Point six. Upon further simplification, it becomes three times n a minus eleven seventy seven point two plus zero point eight n a is equals to minus five eighty eight point six. And then, after further simplification, it becomes three point eight n a. Is equals to five eighty eight point six. So NA becomes one fifty four point eight nine newtons. But our target is not to find the NA force, but the force P. So again, from equation one, this equation. Here it is. Yes, this equation P is equals to N A. So P is from equation one P minus N A is equal to zero. So P is N A and P becomes one fifty four point eight nine newtons. This is our final answer. I hope you will find this video helpful. If you do, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates. And if you have any question or any doubt about this problem, then you can ask it in the comment section and I will answer it as soon as possible. Thank you.